We're going to go through a couple of examples here of stability analysis, and we want to determine if it's going to diverge or converge, if it's going to oscillate or be smooth, and then we'll calculate the final value of a, with a step response, and then also finally we'll plot the step response to verify the solution. Let's just go through the first one right now. We know if it's going to be stable or unstable, if any of the real parts, looking at the real parts, if any of them are positive, then it's going to be um, it's going to be unstable. Okay, but if all of them have negative real parts, then it's going to be stable. So let's look at the roots of the denominator. So we look at uh, set that equal to zero, and we have a couple that are equal to plot plus one, and then we have a couple that are negative as well. So this means that it's going to be unstable. Okay, and then we can know if it's going to oscillate or be smooth. If it has any imaginary parts, it's going to oscillate. And you'll always have those in pairs. Okay, so the imaginary parts like a plus or minus 3i or something like that. Uh, but this one is going to be smooth because there are no imaginary parts. Let's look at this next one. We have, um, you know, s minus 1 equals minus 1. And we have 10 of those. Um, and then we have a few more. We just have our quadratic formula here. I'll do negative 1 plus or minus square root of minus 3 divided by 2. So that's going to be negative 0 0.5 plus or minus um, 0 0.86 times i. So in this case, we have all negative real roots. real uh, roots of our denominator, the poles, and so therefore it's going to be stable. And then the other thing we want to look at is uh, imaginary parts. We do have some imaginary roots, so it's going to oscillate. So it's going to oscillate, but be stable. And then uh, the final one, let's go ahead and look at this one. We have uh, you know, a numerator that's s minus 3 as well, those will actually cancel. So that's one thing you got to look for in the numerator. Normally you just don't pay attention to the numerator, but in this case you do have one of the roots of the numerator, we call those zeros. It's going to cancel with one of the poles, the roots of the denominator. And so we're just left with s equals negative 1, and then s equals negative 0 0.5 plus or minus 0 0.86i, same as we had before. Okay, so it's going to oscillate, and uh, because all the real components of that, we have negative 1 and negative 0.5, because those are negative, then it's going to be stable. Let's do a final value theorem as well. We can calculate the, uh, you know, what the final value theorem. We look at the limit as s goes to 0, and we can get our gain by taking that limit, which will be kp, and we'll know that kp equals delta y over delta u, and delta u equals 1. So in this case, the gain and the delta y are going to be equal to each other. If you have a signal with uh, final value theorem, we say s goes to 0, s times y of s. OK, but in this case, we have y of s equals, um, you know, divided by u of s equals g of s, but u of s equals 1 over s. And so if we just plug that in here, the 1 over s is going to cancel with the s. And so that's why our gain is going to be equal to the delta y if um, delta u equals 1. OK, so let's just go ahead and plug in s equals 0 here. So in this case, we'd have 0, 0, 0. And we'd be left with negative 4 divided by 6. OK, and so that would suggest that's our final value. But for unstable systems, final value theorem doesn't apply. So that one doesn't apply. Uh, there is no final value. It goes to infinity. But this one is stable. These are going to be 0. And we're going to be left with y infinity equals 2. And that, in this case, is also equal to our gain. OK, let's look at the one down below. Uh, those poles canceled out there. And they're also going to cancel out just see if we do the, uh, you know, that pole uh, S is positive 3 is also going to cancel. It's going to be a stable system. 
Um, I can just cancel that with that one all the way. And this one, the y infinity is going to be equal to 1, and that's also going to be equal to our gain. Okay, let's go through and just simulate these now. So I'm going to open up Python, and we'll use NumPy and SciPy, the signal package, and then we'll use matplotlib. So for the very first one, you have problem 1a, and we're just going to have our numerator, which is going to be equal to 4. And then we also have, uh, you know, this first polynomial. Let me just put this off to the side just so we can see these as we develop it. Okay, we have just uh, 1, negative 1. And then we have 1, 2, so that's going to be s plus 2. And then we have 1, 3 for the s plus 3. And then we're going to just multiply those together. I'll use the poly 1D from NumPy to create my polynomials and then just multiply those together. And then I'll have my signal.transfer function. That's how I combine it into a transfer function. And then I'll use the step. This is a signal.step. And I'll return the T and the Y. And I'll just plot those T and Y values and give it a name and a legend. Okay, so there's the very first one. Let's go and do the second one as well, just modifying this one. Now this one has s plus 1 to the 10th, so I'm going to use a different way than the poly 1d now. And I'll have my p1 is s plus 1, and then uh, p2 is going to be 1, 1, 1 for the s squared plus s plus 1. And then there's my denominator is going to be p1, but I'm, um, I also put some time values I want in there. Okay, but I'm going to uh, I'm going to multiply these together and I'll have a denominator where I'm going to convolve the denominator with one more p1 and I'll do that nine more times. Okay and then I'll have um, denominator I'll convolve that with p2 and then I'll just print my denominator so my polynomial and then create my transfer function and generate the step and then plot it. Okay, let's go on to problem 1b now, or 1c. Uh, and now this one's just going to be 1, and then I'll have the s plus 1, and then the s squared plus s plus 1. And I'll multiply those together, and create my transfer function, and I'll generate my step test, and then just plot it. Okay, so there is my, uh, you know, these final ones. Uh, one thing on this loop, let's just go ahead and check how many times we are... Um, multiplying this through. I'll just print i there. Okay, and then I'm going to come into IDLE. Um, I just use the Notepad++ just to edit it, and then I'll use IDLE to run it. Okay, so this is going to generate a couple figures for me. Now we just want to check and see if we got consistent results as we had with just looking at the roots of the denominators for each of those. So the first one should be unstable. And uh, so let's look at the first one, minimize these. There's our unstable, and we showed that it um, didn't oscillate, so it's smooth and unstable, so uh, that is consistent. Let's look at our second one now. Our gain was equal to 2, so for a step response, the final value should have gone to a value of 2. And we had, we said it was oscillating. We had one or a couple of imaginary roots there. Uh, you know, it's just a very slight oscillation. You really can't even see it here, but it, it is uh, slightly oscillatory. Okay, that 10th order polynomial, uh, the s plus 1's kind of dampen out uh, any of the oscillations there. So it, it's very slight. Okay, but it is stable, and it goes to a value of 2. Okay, and then let's look at the third one. Okay, so here it is. Uh, we said it was going to oscillate, so you can see the oscillation there, and with a gain of 1, or delta y was going to be equal to 1, so we verified that as well with that plot. Okay, let's just look at our uh, polynomial here. Just make sure we have uh, the correct order that we went through it. We went 1, uh, we have 0 through 8, so those are all the times that it convolved that matrix, and then there was our denominator. Okay, and there's the denominator for the third one. So you can just print out some of those with the uh, poly 1D. It'll generate those. Okay, so that concludes um, this one. I'll just show you the where you can access the content for this. If you come to the PDC, the apmonitor.com, Process Dynamics and Control website, this is under the assignments. 
And if you scroll down to stability, there's some lecture material on stability analysis. If you'd like to look at more of the theory on why we did these things and different methods that you can use to calculate these values. And then this is the down here at the very bottom. Here's the ex here are the exercises that we just went through. Okay, there's a little bit of sample code there if you just need some help getting started with plotting the response. We'll also go through problems two and three next.